Going into the 2021-22 season, the Winnipeg Jets were ahead of the Calgary Flames in cup-winning odds. After acquiring Pierre-Luc Dubois the previous season and attempting to address their issues on the blue line, the team appeared to be, to most spectators, last October to be contending for a playoff position. However, following an extremely disappointing season for the club, Mark Scheifele's name began to be heard more and more. Following a post-game interview he did alongside teammates, it increasingly became apparent that some dysfunction behind the scenes was beginning to seep through into the open. In this video, we're going to take a deep dive into the ongoings behind the scenes involving Shifley in order to best determine if he's a locker room cancer or simply just misunderstood. And with that, here is the truth about Mark Shifley. Following the Atlanta Thrashers' official relocation to Winnipeg in 2011, that summer, equipped with a first-round selection, the Jets chose Mark Shively as their very first draft pick in history. Drafted 7th overall, Shively showed much promise as a skilled playmaker at center. For the first six seasons, the Jets barely had a sniff at the postseason, as their only opportunity was dashed by the Anaheim Ducks in four games. However, optimism began to take hold in Manitoba after the Jets drafted Patrick Laine, second overall in 2016. Laine, who was showcased as being a skilled sniper at wing, began to prove that he wasn't going to disappoint. And after having a 44-goal season his sophomore year, it wasn't long after Laine began to feel frustrated with not being given playing time on the first line. Laine, who has always displayed confidence, said according to Sportsnet, with the merits I have, somewhere else I'd have an opportunity to play with the best players. Everyone who understands hockey should know that. Laine says. Shifley, who began receiving top line minutes in 2016, had been consistently playing up to that point with Blake Wheeler on the first line, and according to the article, had assisted an astounding 58% of Shifley's goals. By the time the 2019-2020 season rolled around, however, Shifley was paired with Laine quite a bit. However, it wasn't long after that, in the next season, that Laine won it out of Winnipeg. And after playing just one game with the Jets, Laine was dealt to Columbus in exchange for Pierre-Luc Dubois. Interestingly, the reason, according to multiple sources over in Finland, had to do with how Shifley and Wheeler both teamed up against him in an attempt to make him feel inferior. Head coach at the time, Paul Maurice, also according to the sources, was too afraid to stop the ongoing harassment. Wheeler, who came out and somewhat apologized, following the trade, admitted he could have communicated better with his teammate. However, when Shifley was questioned regarding the situation, he didn't have a word to say. After Laine's departure, some fans may have thought the drama was behind them, but things continued to unravel further. As far as Shifley was concerned, something very rare happened to the forward during head coach Paul Maurice's final full season with the team. Maurice made the decision to bench his star center while his team was trailing 3-1 to to Toronto. According to an article from Sportsnet, the decision was made after Shifley decided to vacate the Leafs' zone for a change on a 4-on-4, allowing for a Toronto goal. Later, post-game, Shifley said he didn't agree with, with Maurice's decision while saying, quote, I don't agree with him benching me, but we don't have to agree on everything. He's my coach, I'm the player. We don't have to agree on everything." End quote. Not long after the 2021-22 season went underway, longtime head coach Paul Maurice surprisingly resigned from his position. Maurice, who was hired in 2014, claimed that the team simply needed a new voice, a response that still has several spectators puzzled. Well, from there, you could say that the team spiraled into mediocrity and finished with their lowest points percentage in five years with a .543. And it wasn't long before the season's end that multiple sources were consistently putting Shifley's name and trade in the same sentence. Something that, from the outside, may seem like an innocent shakeup, but could very well be motivated by other reasons behind the scenes. Even though Shifley did finish with 70 points in 67 games played, his plus-minus was astoundingly the worst out of the entire roster, despite the fact that he finished second in points. As a minus 17, the only player close to him in range regarding the stats was Blake Wheeler. Yes, plus minus isn't the be all end all, but looking at it from this perspective, it tells that maybe, just maybe, Maurice was onto something when he benched the forward last campaign. And while you may be wondering, but Alyssa, how does this even factor into being a potential locker room cancer? Well, it's going to tie in pretty well with this next part of the story. As I alluded to at the video's beginning, during post-game interviews, things were said that revealed conflict 
within the team. As I alluded to at the video's beginning, during post-game interviews, words were said that revealed conflict within the team. When asked about the prospect of remaining in Winnipeg, Shifley seemed to reply with rather egocentric comments, while saying, quote, I have to think about my career and what's going to be best for me. Those are going to be talks with my agents and everyone in my family to figure out what I really want." End quote. And it was directly after that that Paul Stasny interjected, interrupting Blake Wheeler, and went on to take the opposite approach by saying, we've got to be held accountable. Whether it's player on player, we've got to have more respect for each other. When you don't have that, you don't care about the teammate next to you, potentially, and, and you just care about what you're doing or certain individual things, that starts bleeding into the game. You also have to have self-awareness and realize sometimes you have to sacrifice a little for the greater of the team. Stasny says. In conclusion, as I try to do, in all fairness, I'm going to leave you all to make your own judgments and opinions. And you're just about enjoying the experience and, um, you know, met a lot of, met a lot of guys that I haven't met before and, um, you know, it's, it's always uh, fun to talk shop with other hockey players, especially at this at this level. Uh, you know, we we uh, had a great first game, obviously, and they kind of did the same thing to us uh, the second game. So uh, we had a lot of fun. You know, our, our, our group had a you know, great group, a lot, of, a lot of fun guys, and I think we all enjoyed it. As far as how it looks, it seems like Shifley isn't the biggest team player, but that's just how it appears at this point in time. An offensive force to be reckoned with, Shifley, if he's put on the market come free agency, will have zero issue with finding a suitor as he does have a team-friendly deal with a modest $6.125 million AAV. I'll leave source links below if you're interested on reading up further on the situation, and as always, thank you for watching.